Hello and thank you so much for tuning in to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, June Rochelle. It is such a pleasure that you've joined us today. And I don't know if it's raining or if it's sunny when you're watching, but I know one thing, the sun is here. The physical sun, sure, you know, it's always above the clouds, but the Son of God, He is in this place. We welcome the Holy Spirit here on set, enjoy or enjoy in our town. And we welcome you. It's not by happenstance that you've joined us today. And no matter what's going on in your life, there's always hope. You keep on living, keep on getting up. God is with you, He's for you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. How do I know? Because I'm a witness. I know what he can do. He can take all that bad stuff and turn it into good. He'll work it out for your good because you're called according to his purpose. And I know you love him and he loves you too. And maybe you may not feel like you're in love in that relationship, but just give it time. It was a singer back in the day. She used to say, rock steady, baby, rock steady. Just keep on holding on and things will change. And we've got a change maker today on our show. And his name is Dennis Bland. He is the president of Leadership Development, Center for Leadership Development. And they are doing awesome things. And we're gonna talk about education today because it is so important. So Dennis, thank you so much for joining us today. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me. Now we hear a lot these days about education. They're gonna cut funding for education. We're gonna switch the schools around over here. We're gonna bust them over there. But there's this place that some people know not of called Center for Leadership Development. Tell me, tell me how your organization is looking at the community and understanding that they have to meet the need for education and going further than just your high school education. Right. Sure. The Center for Leadership Development, which was founded 40 years ago to help put African American youth on an academic college and career track, has actually created a formula that is, that is its approach to holistic youth development. And the formula essentially says, you better instill some values because we tend to live our lives out of a value system. And so those values at CLD, we call CLD principles for success. Those values are character development, educational excellence, leadership effectiveness, community service, and career achievement. The things that we value are the things that tend to get our most precious endowments. Our time, our energy, our focus, our passion, our dedication, our discipline, our resiliency. So whenever we're talking to young people, our first question is, what is it that you value? And now don't give us the answer that you think we want to hear because there are other ways we can begin to determine beyond, besides your responses what it is you truly value. So at the Center for Leadership Development, we want to understand, do you really value an education? And in fact, our belief is that while all the talk is really about education, we think the reason that there is not a lot of movement is because we're really focusing on the wrong issue. Is it that there really is an education problem or is it that there is a problem about us not valuing the educational opportunities that are before us? In fact, at the Center for Leadership Development, we talk often about providing an education on an education. Do I even understand what an education is? Do I get it? Do I care? Now, it's actually, to actually it's easy to look at students and do comparisons in cities and states across nations. You can look at other places. You can look at people and say, you don't have to tell me a word about your value around education. All I have to do is observe you. My observation lets me know that you value education. And when we observe a lot of the young people that we work with, the honest love says and the love honesty says, you value a lot of things. Education is not one of them. And now let's see what we can do to meet in the middle so we can help you understand why this whole thing of education is so powerful and is so meaningful to some other people while it may not be there for you yet. Yet, that's the key word. Not, maybe not yet, but it's imminent. Absolutely. Now, you, you couldn't be the president of, of CLD and not know some statistics about what happens to, in general, you don't have to give me specifics, but what is the outlook overall for young people, especially uh, 
black men and women who don't have an education after they get out of past high school. We're, we're not even going to entertain if they don't finish high school. That's not an option. But what are some of the, the things that they can face if they don't get that, that college education? Sure. Well, actually, the statistics are very bleak. At the time, the 2007-2008 recession, we had a very traumatic event happen in our economy, a traumatic shift. The traumatic shift was that millions of jobs went away that will never come back. And that sober reality then says that from this point forward, for those who want to be employed in a market economy and employed at a livable wage where they can pay and maybe have some conveniences in life, the majority of the jobs that now exist or that will exist in that new economy, upwards of 60% of those jobs will require some level of education beyond high school. And so that is the current reality. There's also a current reality that in the state of Indiana and in our public universities, the four-year college completion rate for African-American students pursuing a bachelor's degree, the four-year college completion rate is right at around 13%. The six-year completion rate for a four-year degree is about 22 percent. So the reality is, while we have this market economy that says we need some post-secondary education learning, if we're going to be able to get the jobs, you have a number of students who are starting college, but they are not completing college, and they are not completing college because they have not been holistically and comprehensively prepared. And so that's the challenge that's before us. Tell me about when you went through the program. Apparently, it, it greatly impacted your life. Well, it did. As I think about my experience in CLD, what stands out first of all for me was that the fact that you had people who were knowledgeable, people who were professionals, who were actually taking time out of their day to invest in us. Even then, that was one of the impressions upon me. And then as I got older, it, be it began to solidify even more deeply how gracious that was of people to pour into other people so that they can enrich their lives. And so for me, it was difficult to become an adult and not try and follow that same path of in turn giving back to others. So that you had people there who were essentially saying, we have accomplished, you have the potential to accomplish, let's get together and let's connect so that we can actually bring you from potential to actualization. We want to help move you from where you are to where we are. And I've just, I, I have always been thankful and grateful for those people who have done that. That's the hallmark of my experience at CLD. People caring enough about you when they didn't have to, giving their time when they didn't have to, sharing their knowledge and skill and experiences when they didn't have to, so that they could help move you and elevate you to positions to where they are and beyond. I can think of some adults that have master's degrees that could go through your program that, that could just stand to go, to come through and hear about um, how to uh, visualize and then transfer that into materialize, materialize materializing their dreams right. post graduate and so wow that's it's just amazing of what one person can do when they make up their mind that not only are they going to succeed but they're going to be material in the success of other people i, I once heard a, a person uh, say he was a mentor i won't call his name out but he said, you're a success. You're a real success when you can duplicate yourself. And I would sit back and chew on that, and, and I, I finally understood that if I was a success and I duplicated myself, not only do I live beyond myself, but others take those character uh, uh, traits and principles with them and do the same. Is that what you do? Is that what you've seen? that you've been able to duplicate many of the God-given gifts and talents that God has given you? I'm not sure I've been able to duplicate it, and I'm not sure some folks would want me to duplicate. They wouldn't <laughs> want to see anything like me coming along again. I'm not sure. But I do know that one of the hallmarks of leadership 
is asking yourself whether or not an environment which you occupy, or an environment which you grace, is enriched or enhanced by your presence. Is the space that you occupy better when you show up? Is it better when you leave? So that is certainly a message that we give at the Center for Leadership Development. That is the hallmark of leadership. And that hallmark of leadership ultimately translates itself into what the leadership gurus call legacy. And that is ultimately, if we're gonna be successful in building leaders, then we need to be effective in leading a legacy of these types of values that have these values transcended to other people who come behind after us. If you're able to share and message and example these values, and those values are adopted by other people, then that is the legacy of leadership and service that you would want to lead. Now, just as we get ready to close, do you have uh, any students that have been accepted in Ivy League colleges? Oh, sure. Yes, well, uh, Yale, most recently, uh, Harvard, uh, Notre Dame, and of course you have great schools that are not Ivy League in terms of reputation, but Ivy League in terms of quality. And so we have students who are going all over. In fact, we just had a, our annual Achievers Awards and our college partners awarded $3 million in scholarships to the 2017 CLB class. So we really are serious about education, but to get there we have to give them an education on an education so that they can become hungry about the education. Well, a scholarship is a, is a big motivator. Well, Everybody knows that that definitely relieves some of the pressure of, of attending college. Amen. A, a now we know the challenge is you have all these scholarship dollars given, but then you have a number of students who got state aid, school aid, but never finished college. So we said ultimately, again, it let us know that for a number of students, it wasn't a dollars issue, it was an education issue, because even when we put the dollars on the table, you still were not successful. Well, Dennis, you have really mapped out the dynamic organization that you represent, um, CLD. It is awesome, you're doing awesome things, and you're incredibly humble about it, but in humility, there's a great presence. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. To our viewer, thank you for tuning in to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, June Rochelle. I look forward to seeing you next time.